there guys, gals, non-binary pals, GM Potter here. Welcome to my channel where I review books and bookish things. Uh, I post on Thursdays and alternate Tuesdays. And yeah, let's get into it. So this book that I just finished reading, like maybe an hour ago, um, is oop, covering up the author. The Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. It is her debut novel. And I, I, I thought the cover was cute. I thought that like you're putting your trope right in the title. That's brilliant. Um, but re what really sold me on picking up this book is the review on the front cover. Outstanding India Holton, best-selling author of the League of Gentlewomen Witches, which I love that book. Um, I want more of that book in my life. So that's what convinced me to pick this one up. So let's get into it. So this book, like I said, is a, the debut novel by Sarah Hawley. It came out this year, 2023, uh, and it has a 3.76 star on Goodreads, which is pretty good, um, especially for a romance novel. Uh, this is a romance novel. I love romance novels. I love horror novels. I love sci-fi, and I, I, I don't like mysteries, but, well, if they're really cerebral and supernaturally, I like them, but... Usually I can figure out the twist before the author gets there if it's well-written, and if it's not well-written, then I don't feel like reading it. So, anyway, this is obviously a fake dating trope with uh, enemies to friends to lovers slant to it. Um, one of the critiques I saw when I was going over the Goodreads reviews was that there wasn't enough tension, that it was too easy for them to get together. And I'm like, did, did you finish the book? Like, did you get past the midway point? Because... First of all, there's a lot of tension in the beginning. A lot of tension. Um, and then once they finally decide to embrace their feelings for each other, so to speak, um, yeah, things go smooth until they don't, and it literally blows up. So there's that. I don't think they actually finished the book. I think they got about a third of the way in. They're like, oh, there's no tension. Like, there's a lot of tension. It's just all sexual. Um, that being said, this book very spicy like beyond spicy full-on smut this is smut i like smut smut makes me happy but just so you know if you're not comfortable with um depictions of sex and vaguely graphic sex you're not gonna enjoy this one because that's woven into the book but um wonderful writing very not so much visceral visual more as you're reading it it encourages you to empathize with the characters so it's more like you're feeling what the characters are going through as you're reading it than actually seeing what the characters are going through as you're reading it uh which was a very interesting take um so the book is we have Marielle Spark, who is a disaster of a witch foretold to be an all-powerful except that she's only skilled at plant magic um which everybody looks down on like that's really cool. Um, I don't know if y'all remember the movie Sky High, um, but there's the girl who's like, I don't, I don't want to use my powers. And they're like, you're a sidekick. And then she like shows up with all these plants and like saves the day. And it's like, yes, that. So it's, it's kind of like that. She has these amazing plant powers, but everybody kind of looks down on her because she doesn't do summoning magic and she doesn't do teleportation and she doesn't do all the flashy magic but she can literally bring plants back from the dead which is really cool um uh she's browbeaten by her mother and the rest of her family because she comes from a line of powerful witches and there's a prophecy when she was being born about her being the most powerful witch of the age and um which breaks her focus and her spells go disastrously wrong because it doesn't matter what you're doing if you can't focus if you're if you're thinking about how awful a job you're doing you're just gonna do a worse job so um in an effort to practice because her fam she wants to get an advanced degree in plant magic basically they call it herbology um but she wants to get an advanced degree in plant magic and okay cool and her family's loaded so she doesn't have to take out student loans her family should her family has said that they will pay for it 
if she gets better at traditional magic, which she's really bad at, and she's in an effort to practice so that she can go to grad school, uh, she tries to summon a sack of flour from across the room because she's baking, because she likes to bake. Instead, she summons Azeroth the Ruthless into her kitchen. Um, and he can't leave. Like, he has to be within a certain distance range of her, a certain proximity to her, until she agrees to give up her soul to him. So, which she's not going to do, because in this universe, as the soul is not just... It's, it's not like a Christian soul, it's your inner spark, and with witches, that's what gives you your magic, it's what gives you your emotions, your empathy, your sympathy, all of these things that make a person a person, and not a robot. And she's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that, and he's like, well, and I'm just gonna stick around forever, I'm immortal, and she's like, okay. And he's really hot, he finds her really hot, things happen. Um, there, there's more to the story, but I don't want to get into it too much, because... Um, I would be giving away a lot. Um, it does, but yeah, it's a really cute book. It's really, really well written. I would say it's one of the better trashy novels I've read in a while. Um, so Goodreads has it at a 3.76. I would give it, honestly, I'd give it a 5. I wrote down 4 in my notes, but thinking about it and thinking about how I already want to go back and reread it, um, I just finished it like an hour ago, and I already want to go back and reread it. I have to bump it up to five stars, because it's just that good. Especially when you consider this is her debut novel. This is her entrance into the world of literature. And yes, it's spicy. It's smutty. It's great. And it's magic, and there's a lot of, a lot of humor. There's a lot of pop culture references that make me wonder how old the author is. Because I got all of them. And they're not necessarily recent pop culture references like there's an america's next top model reference like it's america's next top witch um and i'm like i get that reference cool um but uh some of my co-workers are very young at my day job and they have no idea what america's next top model is which is awful what the state of affairs in the world in which we're living that you haven't seen america's next top model it's a terrible show it's trash tv but I love it. <laughs> like, I'm, there's a YouTuber who I will try to remember to link um, in the cards up above who is going through and, like, she's a professional photographer. And she goes through and she's like, yeah, this wouldn't happen. They're, these are bad photo shoots on purpose and they're treating the models badly to try and evoke a response. And it's fantastic. I, will, I can't remember her name, but I'll try to link her up above. Um, but yeah. Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. Five stars. Should you read this? Yes. Please do. Uh, let's give the author some love because this is amazing. And yeah, have you read it? Um, do you plan to read it? Do you like smut? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.